For the next lecture, we're going to do some applications now of using propositions. Um, I'm not going to do everything that is in the book. I'm going to focus on two, two things in particular, but I want to do at least one because it's something that we need to do um, later. That is uh, natural language versus formal language. So these propositions, what we have with, with these operators, so I remind you, we have the operators we have is negation or and if then, and even the biconditional, even only if. We will say much more about them in the next sessions and so, but for now um, we're just going to use those. And um, so we can build now um, statements, more complicated statements, using these and propositional variables. But what we later we're going to be using this to deduce some, some truth, to do some things, to prove some things, and and uh, we need to refer somehow to transform natural language uh, expressions into formal language. It's not always easy because natural language is sometimes vague and is sometimes ambiguous. So um, uh, we will, when we get to this and do this more, uh, we will practice it more. But I just want to give you one example. I'm going to go to the book here, and I want to look at this example here. Um, and the example that I'm looking for is uh, this one here, example two. So I, I read with you, okay? Let me enlarge it a little bit. So translate this English sentence in logical expression. And it is, you cannot ride the roller coaster if you are under four feet tall unless you are older than 16 years old. That is not a strange thing, right? It's, it's, it's something that you might see on a sign or something like that. Okay, so let's try to analyze that. So what we do then? The first thing we do is we say, okay, what we need is we need propositional variables that represent these statements. Q, R, and S they took here. And they say Q is, um, you can write, write the roller coaster. So I'm just going to write, write. Okay, so, uh, sorry, for writing, I, I sometimes abbreviate things. Then that is Q, R is under four feet, so less than four feet. Okay. And then uh, S is the statement, you're older than 16 years. So S mean oh, sorry. S is bigger than 16 years. Okay. So let's now think about it. So you cannot ride the roller coaster if you are under 4 feet tall, unless you are older than 16 years old. Okay. So what are we looking for? Well, there's one word that should sticks out a little bit, and that is this if here. Okay, so this might this reminds of of the uh, this uh, if then the implication. Now we normally in in this when we write p q then we mean if p then q. But in English very often one says it the other way right. It says like you can do q if yeah you can come if you are if you behave. Right? So we sometimes put things in front, and this is exactly what happens, right? If you think of it, is, this is the conditional, this is the, the, the premise that, you, that needs to be fulfilled. So this is what on this side of the arrow stands, and this thing is what stands on this side. Well, we, well, we, we did this with double, double things, right? Okay. All right, so this tells us you cannot write a roller coaster is going to be at the end of our implication. So don't look at the solution yet. Let's, let's try to build it up. Okay, so what does that mean? You cannot write a roller coaster. How can I express this with these three? Well, it clearly is a statement involving Q, but it is actually not Q, but not Q, sorry for the pun. So what we have to say here is not Q. That is the implication. And now what is the condition? If you are four feet tall, unless, okay? So if you're under four feet, if you're less than four feet, that is one of the conditions, okay? So this is this condition R. Now what is this other condition? Unless you are older than 16 years old, right? That means if you're not less than 16 years, then you cannot do it either. So, if you're less than fearful, and you are, so again, this is where we actually using already a little bit of logic reasoning. We say that unless you're older than 16, means the same as if you're not 16, right? So, if you're not 16, this means the negation of this thing, not S. 
And what we're saying is, is it or, and, what, what, what do we have to put between the two? Well, it's these both conditions have to be satisfied, right? If you think about it, we know roller coasters, if you're too, too young, you cannot ride it, and if you're too small, you cannot ride it, okay? Uh, unless you're, you, you might be young, but tall enough, then you can ride it. So we are dealing here with an end, okay? And so this is exactly what it says here. We see that there is an extra parenthesis that I put there just for legibility. But in, in this case, it, it's, yeah, it's better to put parentheses. Let me put it there. I don't want to discuss too much parentheses. Okay, so this is, as, as, as you can tell, it's not so easy, right? And so I leave other things uh, in the readings for you and also homework problems, I do some. But I don't want to talk about this now yet. We will come back to it. So the next thing I want to do is, um, the one, the first application, it's kind of a fun application if you want, is about puzzles, logic puzzles. Logic puzzles. Okay. <clears throat> Again, I'm not going to do all the puzzles that are, that, that are possible and please read them. There are, there are, some of them are really fun. And it's not so easy to solve these puzzles, by the way. Okay. But I'm going to do a type of puzzle that is uh, introduced by uh, a guy known, called Smullian. So, Raymond Smullian. And um, he was uh, actually... Um, if I don't remember, he's from New York. No, uh, uh, where was he born? I thought he was from New York, but I might be wrong. I'm not sure. Okay. So, and he came up with this, this type of puzzle. And he says there's an island where two types of people live. And so there are, so on this island, there's a lot of people, okay? And there are two types. Either there are knights. And then there are knaves. Now, okay, a knight is a noble guy, and so what is a knight? He always speaks the truth. He's always truthful. And so the knaves are kind of the opposite, okay? A knave is kind of a bad guy. It's not really true, it's just a, a helper, but okay, he, he always lies. Okay? So if you know that somebody is a knight and he says something, you know it's true. And if you know he's a knave and he says something, you know it's false. But the fun thing is now that you don't know what they are, right? You cannot tell otherwise. They, they don't look special or they don't wear something that you can recognize them. They just are either knights or knaves, in, in, innate, without any tells. And so here's an example of, of such a, quiz, a question is... Um, uh, what can we do here? Um, I'll do this one here. So A makes us, the A. So what what you do is you encounter two of them or three of them, depends a little on the situation. So in this in this first puzzle, we encounter two of them. So we have an A and a an B. So these are members, the people that live on this island. But so they are either knights or knaves. Both could be knights, could be knaves. Either one knight, one knave. We don't know. Okay. So the A now. Moreover, they make statements. Sometimes one of them says something, some of them both says something. In this case, both say something. So A says, um, A says B is a knight. Now, we're going to have to make this a little bit formal and we don't want to write too much. So a knight, I'm going to call one. And knaves are zero, right? Because one is truth and zero is lies. Okay. So A says B is, uh, what does it say? B is a knight. Okay. So this is means B, B is a knight. Okay, that's what this means. I'm writing it formally this way a little bit, make it easier for us to recognize what it is. Now, B says also something. What does B say? B says uh, we are opposite. So whatever one is, the other one is the... Okay, okay you, got the, you, you understand the notion of opposite. Okay. Now, how do we solve these puzzles? I mean, what, what you do is basically go over every possible case. Now, so, a good puzzle, but, well, let's say, a, some of these puzzles have only one solution. In other words, there is only one possibility for A and B. 
Sometimes a puzzle is made so that there are several possibilities. Sometimes a puzzle is made so that it's not possible. And so it is the, our goal to uh, find out whether it is whether this is a, a, a solution or there is no solution or there are several solutions. Now let's focus on those puzzles that have exactly one solution. Okay, so how does that work? Okay, so what you basically do is go over all possibilities and see which of these possibilities is actually can hold. Okay, so I want to do this, uh, it's not done in the book, so I'm going to do it myself here uh, in using a truth table. So A and B. And what are the possibilities? Again, A could be a knight or, or A could be a knave, so that is A is. This, now we, we are used to true table, we have two variables, so to speak, A and B. And so the meaning here now is, it's slightly different meaning, and we have to use this, we're going to use this later in other settings too, that true tables can have some other meaning. The meaning here is, like this, in, in this row, let me uh, indicate this, what does this row mean? It means that A is a knight and B is an knave. That's one of the possible combinations. And these four, if you think about it, is all four combinations. So now what we want to do is rule out combinations. Which of these combinations cannot be true? And then hopefully, if, if the puzzle is set up properly, there's at the end only one possibility left. And that's our solution. Okay? So how do we do that? Okay. So first thing, they have these statements here. So I'm, I'm going to call this P of A. That is this statement. So I said A here, but perhaps it's better to say... Okay, let me rewrite this. So, P of A is the statement. So, P of A means this, that's what A says. Okay? And then this is P of B, the other one. Okay, let me, oh, sorry. Let me also fix this. Let me have this ready. PP is this. Okay, so PA. So, PA says that B is 1. Okay? Now, be careful. We don't know whether this statement is true or false. Right? Remember, this is a statement. It could be true, it could be false. So, let's see what are the possibilities here. When is this statement true? Well, exactly when A is a knight. So, exactly when this is a 1 and 1. So, 1, 1. And when is it false? Exactly when A is a knave. 0, 0. Okay? Now, let's see. Are already things ruled out now? Okay? Let's look at the, all the possibilities. If PA is true, yeah? So if, 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 okay, let me point. So if we're in this situation, that means PA is true, that means B is 1. Yes, that is the case. So that is fine. Now what about this situation here, that, this uh, combination? Remember, we are trying to rule out these rows, right? Let, let me write them a little bit. And, and we hopefully, as I said, at the end, we would one have one row left. Okay, so what about this one? Now PA is true. So what is PA? PA says B is 1. Oh, no, 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 that's not the case. So we have to rule this out. Okay, I'm going to do this with this thing. So this is already impossible. Okay, next. What about this statement? Now, now PA is a lie. B is 1. So what is the lie of B is 1? What is the negation? What is the opposite? Is B is 0. Is this the case? Oh, no, 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 B is 1. So again, we have to rule this out. Okay. And then the last one, PA is 0 means PA is a false statement. That means this, sorry, let my pointer, this means this statement is false, so B should be 0. Ah, okay, that's okay. So this is the only two that we have ruled out. But luckily we have more, right? We have also PB. So let's do what, P, what is PB. Now, when is PB true? Well, this is now spoken by B, and it is true if B is a knife, uh, a knight, not a knife, and otherwise it's zero, okay? Correct, right? Uh, one more time. This is the statement B makes, and B says the truth if he is a knight, so this is a true statement, and he is it's false when he's a knave. Okay. So, we have already ruled out those two, so we don't really have to bother about those two anymore, but you could do if you want to. But let's look at, I'm going to look for the fun of it to the last one. Let's see whether that's possible. Okay, well, let's do the first one. Let's do the first one. There's no reason to, to do one or the other. Okay, so PB is a true statement. Okay, we are opposite. 
So remember, this is now a true statement, right? This is what it says. One means that this is a true statement. We are opposite. Is this the case? Now we check. No, that's not the case because they are the same. Okay, so also this has to be ruled out. So it seems that this is now we have the solution, but we should double check that it actually is consistent, right? It, as I said, it, a, a tricky question puzzle could have actually no solution. And this is possible, okay? Okay, let, but let's double check. So we are in this situation. This is the only thing that we still have to look at. PB is zero. This means this is a lie. We are opposite. What's the negation of that? That means we are the same. Now let's see. Is it the case that they are the same? Yes. So not only... Uh, is this, um, we don't rule this out, it holds, okay? So what is the conclusion now? So from this we conclude that A is a naive, right? This means that, and B is a naive. That's the only consistent solution. Cool, huh? okay? There, I'm not saying that it's the only way you do it, and then the book doesn't do it that way. But this is a very systematic way. Okay, so I want to show you uh, another one and make it even a little bit harder. This one is getting a little bit harder, so I leave the other simpler ones for homeworks, but I want to do a harder one as well. Okay, so here we are. Um, so we are um, on a neighboring island. Okay, so on other island, so we had this island here, this is the Night Nave Island, and here is another island, so here is this other island. And what is happening on this island is there are three types of people. There are still the knights, there are also the knaves, and then, um, depending on, I think Smullion originally called them the normals, but let's call them the spies. I don't know, I, I actually like normal better than spy, but I follow the book here. These are problems from the homework, and I'll assign some of them. Okay? Now what's the deal with, with these guys? Well, knights are still knights, they always speak the truth, so always truthful. What about knaves? Always liars. What about spies? They can do either. So in other words, I don't have anything information on spies. It sounds like almost, yeah, okay, so what? In other words, whatever a spy says, it could be true, it could be false. I, I have to ignore that, right? Whatever a spy says is something that I don't know. Okay. Now, so, the puzzle is now the following. You, you meet three people. Let's call them A, B, and C. And again, you don't know what they are. But you have one extra information. Wait, let me double check here, yeah. Yeah, so there are three people, and you have one information. There is exactly one knife, one exactly one knave, and exactly one spy. So that's the extra information. So you know one of each. How you know that? That's let's let's not talk about that. But somehow you know that it's one of each. Okay. Let's say they each had to send a representative, uh, but then they don't. You don't know which one is what. Okay, so now they, they, they make statements. Here are the statements. So PA, that's the statement, remember, that's what how we say, denote what A says. A says, uh, C is a knave. C is zero. Remember, that's knave, right? PB says, so B says, sorry, PB, so B says, um, A is the knight. A is one, okay, B is one. So what does C say? C says, uh, I am the spy. So it says, C is spy. So I, I remember spy is, is not zero, it's not one, it's, well, zero slash one or something. I, I'm just going to call it spy. Okay? Good. Ready? So, uh, first of all, I have to make a truth table. How many rows? I hope you can answer this. All right, because we have now three variables. And we have to look at all possibilities. Now, what am I going to list? I'm going to list the possibilities, that is, which one, the, the, so one and zero means, one means knight, so one is knight, let me write it one more time, and zero is knave, okay? 
So I'm going to list these possibilities. Now, it is true that it's not possible for all... There is one of them as a spy. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, let's look at all the possibilities of knights and knaves. And for the moment, ignore who is a spy yet. It's important, but at the moment, I'm going to ignore it. So what is the possibility? Well, I, A could be a knight. Uh, there are four possibilities for A to be a knight. Uh, whereas then these two guys are knights and, and then these two are knaves and then knight, knave, knight, knave, right? It's the same pattern that we always have done. I hope that you by now get familiar to this pattern. And then so one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So these are all the possibilities, possible possibilities for A, B and C to be knights or knaves. Now, I admit this is never going to happen because one is going to be a knight, one is going to be a knave, but the other one is going to be a spy. So in each row, I'm going to have to, at some point, decide, oh, okay, that's not the one that is actually a spy. Okay, or that's not the zero that actually is a spy. Okay, so in each row, I'm going to have to change one of these numbers. Okay, so it gets much more complicated, I told you that, right? Okay, but still, let's, let's start. P of A. P A, the statement P A that says that C is zero. Now, when is it true? Well, when A is a knight. And when is it false? When A is a knave. See, if A is a spy, I have no information about that, so I, that's why I'm not considering it. I'm only considering possibilities that A is a knight or A is a knave. Okay, and the same for B and C. Okay, so now let's <clears throat> look at what these things say. P A says C is zero. So this is now, this is a true statement. Is this true? No, no. Well, C is 1 in this case, so okay, so this is out the door. The next one. This says C is 0. Yes, because this is now a true statement, C is 0, so this is okay. This says C is 0, right? It's still a true statement, but no. So this again is, no. Uh, no, this one. Which one was it? This one, right? The next one, that's okay, right? It's a true statement, namely C is 0. Yep. Now here, be careful. Now it's the opposite, right? Now. This says C is not zero, okay? P A is a false statement. C is not zero. The negation is C is not zero. Yet yeah, you say, oh, that means C is one. No, because C could also be a spy. So we, this statement, if it's false, this statement says that C is not a knave. There are two possibilities still. C could be a knight or C could be a spy. Okay, so this is a possibility that is one of the possible things. So we cannot exclude this. Neither can we exclude this guy. Right? Because um, this, if, if, uh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. <clears throat> what about, yeah, sorry, so we, sorry, no, no, sorry. Re, 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 we, we were going too fast. Okay, one at a time. P A. This is C. This is a lie. So this is a lie. In other words, C is not zero. That means C is either one or C is a spy. Remember, I have not marked the spy cases here. So when there's a one, I have to take this as a possibility. So I cannot exclude this yet. What about the next line? This says it's a lie. It is not true that C is zero. Yeah, but C is zero. So this is now clearly impossible. So now we can. This one we can rule out. Okay, and then it's clear that for I hope that it's clear that then this is for the same reason cannot be ruled out, and for the same reason this this is false. We saying this says that P A is false, C is not zero. Yeah, but C is zero, so no, that doesn't fit the situation. So we have ruled these on out. Okay, so next then the statement is um, P B says that A is one. Now when is P B true? Well, when B is a knight. So in other words, we, it basically is the copy of the B column here, right? 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. But now let's see what does this all mean. Again, the ones that are ruled out, I don't have to look at. So let's look at this guy. Sorry, this one. Here. This PB says is a true statement. So A is 1. Are we in the case, case that A is 1? Yep. So cannot rule it out. This one says now, oh, it's not true. PB, PB says it's not true that A is 1. What is the case? Oh, A is one. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just saying it's not, and here it is. No. Ruled out. Okay. Next. This says, uh, PB says uh, A is one. No, it's not the case. So, ruled out. Finally, 
What do you think? Try to do this. Don't, don't, don't wait for me to give the answer. Try to figure it out yourself. Now I'm getting a little bit further, so it's a little bit less work. Let's think about this one. This says PB is false, right? So A is not 1. Well, that's okay. It's 0. So this is, cannot rule this out. So there are two possibilities left. Okay, so which one is it now? Okay, we have still one last uh, statement, right? That's the statement PC. And when is, this, when is this statement true? Well, whenever C is a knight. So, in other words, you copy the C column, right? 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so let's analyze uh, the cases. Well, there are two cases left. Let's look at this case. This means that C is not um, true. PC is not true. So, C is not a spy. Well, this agrees because here I'm saying that C is an A, so this is okay. So this is okay. I cannot rule that out. What about this one? This statement says it's true now, right? One means it's true. So C is a spy. But C is a truth teller here. This says that C is a knight. So this is not possible, right? Remember, I don't look at the knight cases, so this case is one of the cases I have to rule out. So this is what I'm left with. Now, you think, ah, I'm done. Hmm. What is, who is what now? We still have to make a conclusion, right? So let's look. According to this table, it seems like you, you might say, oh, this says that A is a knight, B is a knight, and C is an eighth. But remember, that's not the case. Okay? One of them is a spy. Now, which one is a spy? Let's think about it. What can be a spy here? Well, the only ones... You have to be one that is a knight, one has to be a knave, and one is the spy. Now, we have, this is the knave. There is no choice. There's only one knave. Okay? Now, one of these two is a spy, and the other one is a knight. Now, you might say, but, 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 but professor, you said both are knights here. What I'm saying, actually, really saying, is not that they're both knights, but what I'm saying is they both spoke the truth. And remember, spies can tell the truth. So, when I say that B is a knight here, this was a bit too... Uh, to say, to bold a statement, but it was mainly, what I was trying to say is only that the statement that B utters is a true statement. And that could be because he is a knight, because then it's always true, but it could also be because he's a spy. Okay, so one of these is a spy and one of them is a knight. What's the deal here? Well, let's think about it. Um, let's, look, let's look at each of these statements, this statement here. C is 0. Okay, that's uh, true. It's a true statement because, right, we're in this situation. So this could be uttered by a knight, could be uttered by a knave. So we don't, uh, by a spy, sorry, by a spy. Knaves are out of thing. Okay. Now, this statement here. Okay. A, A is 1. Oh, this tells me. This tells me, this is a true statement, this says, remember, these are not, this, 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 what I'm saying here is, you should really look at this, this says that, this line says that PA is a true statement, PB is a true statement, and PC is a false statement, okay? Now, we see that, we know that PC is a false statement because, well, no, because we know that C is a knave, we already, sorry, we already established that, I should have perhaps marked this already, right? So, I repeat, why do we know that C is a knave? Well, we have one is going to be a knave, one is going to be a knight, and one is going to be a spy. Now, the spy is the one that is either true or false. So, in other words, of these three, it's three. there's only one that we are for sure is, is a knave, right? Because this one, we have this here. This is a knave, okay? So, we know that C is a knave. So, this is a knave. So now we have to decide which of the two, A is a spy or B is a spy. Now, this says PB is a true statement. Oh, but this statement says that A is a knight. So we know that this is a knight because it's a true statement. So what is the conclusion now? That B is a spy. Who happens to tell the truth. That's what this means. Okay? And this is all still compatible with the story and it's the only thing that is compatible with the story. And that's how uh, it's the solution of our um, puzzle. Okay.
So one more thing that I want to do, uh, this is a little bit quicker, but it's important because we're going to do it later. These are so-called logic gates. So you might have already guessed that since we have these um, using ones and zeros here, that it is very closely related also to um, computers, binary, and in fact also to electrical circuits. And so we can interpret one as uh, there is a voltage, there is a um, current, so there is current, and zero as no current. Okay. And so what we get, what, what is now, when you build computers, what you do is, or you have a bit on and bit off, you can also call it this way, is that you, the computer changes the bits in certain ways, okay? And so how is the, the, the not, let's start with not. How does what not do? If, if the input, remember, this is given by this truth table, right? If P is, P is either false, 1 or 0, then not P is the opposite, okay? So we're going to build a not gate, meaning this is an electrical gate, so we have, of course, it's, it, it's schematically, right? So we have a current that comes in, or not, right? There is, there is an electrical um, connection here, a conductor, conducting line here, which could or have current or could not have current. And then we have what we call a not gate, which is denoted traditionally by this triangle with a little uh, ball on its nose, and then the uh, circuit continues. Okay, and so there's, the circuits normally have uh, an arrow, right? There's, there's an arrow, there's a direction on which the current is supposed to run or not. So what does this do? This is if you start with the current P, then afterwards you have the current not P. So in other words, if you if if you put a current on this here, if you put a current on this point, then once it passes through the gate, the current will be have gone. On the other hand, if you don't put a current on this one, at the end there will be a current. You understand that? Okay. So we have a NOT gate, and so we have likewise an OR gate. So this is the NOT gate. This is the OR gate. Now, of course, we have two incoming um, possible currents, and this is denoted by um, something like this. I don't know exactly what to call it. Like a, like a starship or something like that. And then again, here's the outcome. And this is P or Q. Okay? So what is the truth table of P or Q? So now, of course, we have four possibilities. And we know that the only case when there will be no current at the end is in this case here, when we started with no current at all. And all the other cases, we have current. Okay? Okay? So somehow it's just putting the two lines together, so if you want. And then we have the AND gate. And so this is a getting gate. So sorry, this is P and this is Q, right? So we have, again, two. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Um, <coughs> incoming. Um, and then this goes into something that looks like that. It's a little bit, this, the, the difference between an OR and an AND gate is picturally a little bit misleading, not very clear, but I mean, the book has a bit slightly better pictures, I guess. So this is P and Q, so P and Q. Okay, and so let's write again what this means, P and Q. So here's P and Q, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? And so what are the, now we know that this is true only when both are true, and in all the other cases it's zero. Okay, so what, what is this now? What can we do with this? So now suppose we have the following expression, P and not Q um, or Q. Uh, let me see, is this the one I want to do? Oh, oh sorry, no, oh, or let, let me let, a little bit more fancier. Um, or not R. So now we have three uh, sources, P, Q, and R, that have or don't have current. And what we want to make is a, a circuit so that at the end, this is the result. What meaning what? Meaning that if you make the 
if, if depending on whether P is true or P is current or not, Q is current or not, or R is current or not, we get current or not depending on how this works. So how do we do this? Well, we just look at the components. That's the same way that we would build a truth table. I'm not going to build a truth table. That we will do that later. So this is an imp we will use this later again. But I want to introduce it already. So first of all, we have this component P and not Q. Now we want to build a circuitry that gives this as an outcome. So we want to build this circuitry first. How do we do that? Well, we have two incomes, right? We have two um, sources P and Q. Now what we want to do, we want to put it to an end gate, but we first have to negate. So this one goes first to a not gate, and only then will they go both, sorry, um, so perhaps get this rid of it, oh, now I lost the whole thing. Through an end gate, and the end gates look like this. Okay, if you perhaps we're going to otherwise get really confused, so that's why it's not or an end inside of them. So this is a NOT gate, this is an END gate. And so the claim is now at the end here, what we get here is P and NOT Q. But that's not the only thing, we also need this guy. So we have a third source, R. First of all, we need also again NOT R, so let's send it again through um, a NOT gate. And now we want to put this this result that we had, sorry, I, got, I went a little bit too liberal with my space here, so let's make it a little bit shorter here. So now, and look, we can make the circuits a little bit like, curl a little bit, right? Now, you have to go to an OR gate, that's the last operation I do. So here we have this OR gate, and then here, this is the current that comes out. So at the very end of my circuit, the current will be given by this formula. So in other words, this is... Uh, basically building a circuit representing a propositional expression. And later we're going to uh, do this given, an, given a certain exponent, uh, propositional expression, find and build a circuit for that. It's not so easy, for instance, the question would be, how are we going to build a gate for this guy, P then Q? You say, okay, let's make a gate that's called that way. But the whole point is to only work with these three gates, not and an OR gate. In some sense, actually, but I don't want to say too much about it, you can even do with only two of those, not an on AND or not an OR, doesn't matter. So you need the NOT gate and you need one of the others, and the other one you can build with that. We'll, that's things that we will discuss later, but in circuitry there are three gates. There's no if-then gate, that doesn't exist, so we have only these three gates, and that's later we will say, how are we going to build a, a circuit for this? I will see it's possible, okay? All right, that's everything I want to say, so homeworks again, please read the uh, material that I have not covered, and then we'll do some more uh, next time.